What's up, everybody? Welcome to the weekend. This is Wrestling Rewind with yours truly, Jeff Meacham. Uh, thank you all again, as I mentioned on the blog on jdmeacham.blogspot.com, soon to be named a regular website. Thank you so, so much for the reviews. Thank you so much for the feedback. Thank you so much for watching the shows the last couple of days, period. I just, the, the support is unbelievable. I'm, I'm literally almost speechless at how much support I'm getting from you guys. Thank you so, so much. Um, also, before I start, I need to send a quick thank you, as, as I did in the blog, to EWF, Jesse Hernandez, Wayne Needham, and everybody there. Um, what an amazing show last night. You guys did such a good job. I didn't know a lot of the guys. I knew some of the guys, but what I saw was really good. So thank you guys so much for having me out, and I will definitely return EWF in the very near future. So thank you guys so, so much. All right. On to a look back at TV for the week. Uh... Not going to be a very fun show today. Uh, I was bummed because I was hoping my first outing on Wrestling Rewind would be a would be a positive one. And instead, WWE and TNA present us with... Bleh. TNA did okay. Impact did okay. But WWE just was just not good. The best show for WWE all week was main event. The throwaway show, if you want to call it that. Yeah, exactly. But we'll start with Raw, because it was on Monday. It was the first show of the week, so we'll start with that. Um, we had a Miz TV segment where John Cena came out, and Miz and him were kind of talking about Dolph and, you know, the whole sophomore thing. And then the savior of the masses himself, Damian Sandow, along with Cody Rhodes, came out and, you know, was saying how, how childish this was and blah, blah, blah. And John challenged them to a match. And, of course, John and Miz beat... Um, the Road Scholars, Team Road Scholars, which I think is bogus, because as much as I like John, as much as I like The Miz, because he is awesome after all, I think that having Team Road Scholars lose a big marquee, even opening match on Raw is is bad, is, is crucial in the wrong direction. Not a good situation. And then Raw um, was deemed Championship Challenge Night, which meant the champions could pick their own challengers for the championships. So the first night, the first set of the night was Antonio Cesaro successfully defending the U.S. Championship against American Patriot himself, Sergeant Slaughter. Sarge, for as old as he is, is looking not too shabby. I mean, you know, he's, he's still got the big chin, you know, the, the, the big deal, but uh, Sarge looked good. I was impressed how Sarge looked, and I um, I was amazed that he went as long as it did with Antonio. Because yeah, it, it was basically a squash. Let's, let's not let's not kid ourselves. Sarge is not in his prime or even in his 1991 prime, but you know he he went a pretty decent length with Antonio for as old as and out of shape as he is. So good job for Sarge. Then we had a tag team title match. This this never-ending team of Ken and Daniel Bryan, and people are going to shit on me for not liking the team, but... Yeah, remember, I'm a Bryan Danielson fan. I'm not a Daniel Bryan fan. I I think it's funny, but I know Bryan is, is capable of so much more as a bad guy without resorting to Goofy. I've seen that Bryan Danielson. That Bryan Danielson is intense, he's a sick dude, and he could do great things, and they are instead going with only one indie darling, which I don't mind, don't get me wrong, because CM Punk is doing amazing things right now. CM Punk is arguably my favorite part of Raw right now. And arguably only because I'm kind of, I've grown very weary of the John Cena story, but we'll get to that at the end of the, at the, end of the Raw review. Um, anyway, Kane and Brian defeated a uh, three-man band with Jinder Mahal ringside, so it was Drew and Slater in the ring. Of course, Jinder Mahal got involved, but at the end, Kane and Brian successfully retained. Uh, then Punk came out with his doctor to have himself declared not ready to go for Monday. Uh, this coming Monday against Ryback, and of course, Mr. McMahon came out to ruin all that. He decided that if... Punk was not medically cleared come Monday night that Ryback would instead face Paul Heyman. Now, spoiler alert for main event review. Um, main event, they announced that Punk had indeed be cleared by WWE doctors. So we will see Punk versus Ryback this coming Monday on Raw. The first Raw of the year. And, of course, Dwayne will be there. Yippee, skippy. So we'll have a title match that shouldn't be happening and the return of a guy who shouldn't be back. Okay. Next, you had a non-title 
uh, challenge match. It was Sheamus defeating Dolph Ziggler by disqualification. Originally, Biggie Langston, I believe, caused disqualification. I don't remember exactly, but I do remember the Shield coming out after and just brutalizing Sheamus after three on one, just massive assault. They did a three man power bomb, and Sheamus got his butt handed to him by the Shield. He held his own for a minute, but it ended up, you know, three on one. You can't really overcome those odds too easily. Eve originally had challenged Mae Young when she saw her in the back to a Divas Championship match. Of course, Mae Young, we found out, was with child, so she could not compete. So Eve came out and had herself declared the winner by forfeit. Caitlyn came out, didn't like that very much, and had a brawl with Eve. Later in the show, of course, we saw Mae give birth to Baby New Year in the form of Hornswoggle with a full head of hair and sucking on a baby bottle. Oh, uh, Hornswoggle. Uh, anyway. Uh, the World Championship match was actually a favorite of mine because our buddy Ricardo Rodriguez, who has been a friend of mine for, God, I think I've known Ricardo for five years now, something like that, since the old New Hall days. Uh, he ch- challenged and actually lost to the Big Show by disqualification when Alberto Del Rio interfered in the contest to in uh, Ricardo's favor. So, Big Show did retain the championship, actually won the match, believe it or not. He did it by disqualification. Um, the big spoiler over the previous weekend going into Raw was the fact that Wade Barrett had defeated Kofi Kingston for the Intercontinental Championship at the tapings, and that came to fruition. Um, Wade is now a two-time Intercontinental Champion. He is, uh, I think, a deserving champion. As much as I like and as much as my son Dylan adores Kofi Kingston. I think Wade's time was well overdue. He's had Kofi's number since the Survivor Series, and that's been over two months now, almost. Actually, about a month and a half, I'll be, I'll be real. About a month and a half. But, you know, he's had his number at every turn, and I think Wade is very, very deserving, and I congratulate Wade, and I am hoping he'll get a long, successful championship reign, possibly going into the Rumble, uh, past the Rumble, into Elimination Chamber, or even Mania. And then you had what was originally supposed to be a three-on-one handicap match with Ryback versus The Shield. It turned into a brawl. Sheamus got involved, and then the returning Randy Orton got involved. So it was, um, I I smell at some point a six-man tag with The Shield versus Ryback, Sheamus, and Orton. I'm not saying it'll be at the Rumble, but I'm saying it will probably happen down the line here. It should, because that's a huge... That's a huge card stacked right there. Just in the main event alone, you've got Ryback, Sheamus, and Orton on one side. You know, Orton, one of the top guys in the last 10 years. Sheamus, one of the top guys in the last few years. And Ryback, the the, the current it factor guy, if you all know of him, to Bobby Roode. And then you got the Shield, who's been the talk of the world. And in the main event segment, if you want to call it that, Dolphin AG's little toast to John Cena's... Uh, dismal year. John came out and counteracted and said, I'm going to enter the Rumble. I'm going to be champion by the end of the year. And then for the second time in his career, Dolph Ziggler literally got crapped on. Literally. John dumped Pooh on Dolph and AJ. I said this on the blog. I mean it. It wasn't funny when DX did it. It was ridiculous and stupid and it sure as hell wasn't funny now. Okay, on to WWE main event on Ion Television. Um, two actually pretty decent matches. I will I will give main event credit for being my favorite show of the week. In a U.S. Championship match, Antonio Cesaro actually carried the Great Khali to a really good outing for the for the Punjabi Playboy. Um, was impressed by how he did. Um, Kali's never going to be the most spectacular wrestler, and he never has been. And I don't think that he, like I said, I don't think he ever will be. But I think for what it was on Wednesday, Antonio did very good things with Kali, and vice versa, to be honest with you. So I think it was very good. The fact that Antonio um, neutralized the great Kali with that neutralizer finisher of hers, his, hers, his was unbelievable. Very good stuff. And then a gauntlet match. To, for Wade Barrett to show his dominance over his opponents. Um, he defeated Yoshitatsu, JTG, and Justin Gabriel before falling to the final opponent, Kofi Kingston. So Kofi would get his shot at the championship back on Friday Night SmackDown. We'll get to Friday Night SmackDown in a moment. 
Um, that was main event, but I, I, like I said, that was the best show of the week. It was an hour, it was good, it was concise, it had decent action, and we also got the update about CM Punk uh, being medically cleared for Monday's Raw to face Ryback in a TLC match. I forgot to add that earlier. It's a TLC match, so Punk is in serious, serious jeopardy of losing the championship. You're right. We're going to have Ryback face the Rock. All right, on to Impact. Uh, we started with the Wrestler of the Year thing where Jeff Hardy the world champion ended up being named 2012 wrestler of the year and actually deemed that as important as being the world champion okay because the fans pick one and the office picks the other but they're both equally important okay um, I'm going to go through my pack really quick because it was actually mostly more action than it was storyline. Um, James Storm defeated Kazarian in a really good little match. Uh, with the last call super kick, of course. O- almost off the top ropes. Storm caught Kaz as he was coming off the rope and just popped him right in the jaw with the last call super kick. Um, in a X Division Championship contender tournament match. Uh, Christian York's surprise Kid Cash. Uh, it was a surprise of the Impact Zone, I think. I don't think too many people expected Christian York to defeat Kid Cash, but he sure did. I expected it. I mean, I've always liked Christian York's work. Um, especially when he was with Joey Matthews, who is now more known as Joey Mercury of uh, m M&M and the Strange Society. Joseph Mercury and the Strange Society. But um, Christian York is an awesome athlete. He's finally getting his chance and TNA to shine on a global stage and more power to him. Um, original match was supposed to be Hernandez facing Matt Morgan. Matt Morgan came out with Joey Ryan. Matt had his arm in a sling and said he was hurt so he couldn't wrestle so he sent Joey in. Uh, Morgan of course took the sling off and attacked Hernandez to get Joey disqualified and then Chavo came in for the save and uh, Morgan hit Chavo with the carbon footprint as much as I'd like to see Morgan and Joey become tag team champions, I think it would serve better if Morgan was on his own. And I don't think Joey needs Matt. I don't think Matt needs Joey. I think they're both do just fine on their own. That's just me. Then the big confrontation about Hulk Hogan, Bully Ray, Brooke Hogan, and what was going on, what wasn't going on, and Bully and Brooke pretty much came clean with what was going on with the two of them, and Hulk responded by being childish and suspending Bully without pay indefinitely and kicking both he and Brooke out of the impact zone. So we'll see where that leads. Um, I think taking your hottest story out of the ring as far as um, taking Bully out of in-ring action is probably not the best idea, but we'll see where it leads next week. I could be completely wrong on that. It's happened before. Um... This whole Joseph Park thing with training with Danny Davis and OVW, and it's cool that Danny Davis is getting time on TV, and you know after the WWE leaving OVW, but um, I I don't understand why we're having our intelligence insulted by making us believe that Joseph Park and Chris Park aren't the same person. We all know that Joseph Park is really Chris. We're not stupid. It's ridiculous. Um, Mickey James and Miss Tessmacher defeated Gail Kim and Tara. I think Mickey got the pinfall. She's sending a message. She wants a chat at the championship again. Definitely, definitely, definitely wants another rematch with um, Tara, the Knockouts champion. And I'd like to see that match. I really would. It'd be cool. Um, after Hulk's little confrontation with um, with Brooke and uh, Bully. He was followed to his office by Bobby Roode and Austin Aries, who were both very upset at the fact that Jeff Hardy was named wrestler of the year and not them. And Hulk basically threw it back in their face and said, okay, well, you two are facing Jeff Hardy and a partner was choosing next week. And, you know, of course, Austin and Bobby are, no, 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 we don't like each other. And, you know, they, they, you know he, he, he doesn't deserve to be in the triple threat match at Genesis for the championship. He doesn't deserve it. He doesn't deserve it. So, yes, it's going to be the two of them facing Jeff Hardy in a triple threat match, elimination style. So it's a three-way dance, ECW style, which I like. I've always preferred three-way elimination matches over three-way, three-way, uh, or excuse me, over triple threats. So that should be good coming up on January 13th. And in the main event, Kurt Angle and Samoa Joe defeated Devon in a masked Ace of Nates member um, in a steel cage match. And the rest of the gang hit the ring, of course, after and was pretty much 
taking Joe and Angle apart when Sting returned. I was expecting him to come out of the rafters because it was a cage match, but instead he just walked down the aisle, went in there, started swinging the bat left and right, cleared the ring almost entirely. There was one guy left over. He was unmasked to reveal former WWE superstar, ECW superstar, Mike Knox. And uh, he was actually named as Mike Knox the WWE by Mike Tanay. And somebody asked me on Twitter whether it was a good idea to have the WWE acknowledged. And you got to understand something, guys. The WWE is the acknowledged brand. The WWE is the acknowledged super power in wrestling, and TNA would be stupid to ignore their existence. It's not like WWE was ignoring WCW um, because they felt WCW was superior. They were ignoring WCW because they were the competition. TNA recognizes they are not competition for WWE, so anytime they can get a rub off a WWE name, they're going to do it. Absolutely. Alright, on to the blue brand. Friday Night Smackdown. Again, not a stellar outing by WWE this week, but we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and cover it. Uh, Randy Orton on the show talked about the Royal Rumble. He's gonna enter it. So now we have John and Orton in the Rumble, and then Sheamus came out said the same thing. He's in the Rumble too, and they were it looked like they were getting ready to fight at first, and then the Big Show came out and Antonio Cesaro came out. So of course, you know, the tag team show that it is first led by Teddy Long, now by Booker T. There was a tag team match made between Sheamus Orton versus Antonio and Big Show. That was the main event for the night. Um, the Miz defeated Heath Slater, and what I remember being a pretty decent little match. Um, not so decent match, but it is what it is. Natalia Hornswoggle and the Great Khali defeated Primo Epico and Rosa Mendez. Oh, what they're doing with Natty is criminal. Just criminal. But what are you going to do? They're going to have something to do. Um, and what I thought was a surprise, but I'm glad they went this way, Wade Barrett defeated Kofi Kingston to retain their Canal Championship. So it looks like my prediction of Wade retaining the championship for a decent amount of time is going to come true. I hope, I hope. Uh, Tamina defeated Layla, and in the main event, of course, the baby faces won. Orton and Sheamus over Show and Cesaro, and then Orton and Sheamus had a you know face to face to end Friday Night SmackDown. So that's how the show went. Uh, I thank you guys very very much for watching this week's edition of Wrestling Rewind, the very first show. Send me some feedback. Let me know. Again, you can find me at facebookcom slash Jeff Meacham. Message me. Don't friend me, cause I don't know y'all. I love y'all, but I don't know y'all. Twitter.com slash underscore Jeff Meacham and YouTube.com here slash JD Meacham. YouTube.com is not here. Uh, YouTube.com slash JD Meacham. And of course, the website now is for now is JD Thank you guys again. We will see you next week with more one-on-one and beyond.